It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. For the last few days, there has been nothing but a collaborative effort against gamers by various different companies and individuals. Of course, in my channel, I talked about how basically for The Last of Us, like how Naughty Dog is going against like the gamers and flagging down videos that were talking about the leaks, I also talked about on my channel how ADL is actually going against Stream and saying that Stream actually enables white supremacists. And for this video, there's yet another organization that's going against gamers. So let's look at the article and I'll give my analysis about this announcement for you guys. And of course, it's really, really terrible. Just absolutely terrible. Activists create no pixel for fascist campaign, marginalizing gamers and YouTubers as fascist enablers. I find it just so fascinating how all these campaigns against gamers this week have all been happening at the same time. I mean, with the case of Steam, like, they basically said that, of course, that there are, like, a very minority of group of people using Steam that are white supremacists, and therefore, like, Steam are, like, white supremacist enablers. But at the same time, they did not take into account that basically, of course, like, any kind of white supremacist could use whatever service, whatever they want to. And so practically like thousands and thousands and thousands of sites have potential white supremacists using that site. And of course, for the case of Naughty Dog, of course, false flagging videos is not okay. So I'm just kind of curious if this is some sort of collaborative effort by companies to go at gamers at once because they're failing big time with all these sort of campaigns against gamers. The campaign is strongly titled, No Pixels for Fascists, and in the words of its representative, Pascal Ragger, it's a network of bloggers, journalists, podcasters, YouTubers, developers, and others who are united against what is described as anti-democratic and inhumane gaming trends. Keep in mind that they're saying that they're going against stuff that are like anti-democratic, but let's go into the article to know about more details of what they consider to be anti-democratic because the hypocrisy in this article is just glazing in this whole entire thing. The group aims to tackle those it considers to be Nazis, homophobes, sexists, and the like who they say are using games and gaming to advance their cause. I'm kind of curious, like what does this group consider to be a homophobe, a sexist, or a Nazi? Because basically, in the modern day definition of most modern day progressives or like social justice activists, if you go against like any sort of social justice cause, you're basically like a Nazi, sexist, homophobic bigot. So I'm kind of curious, do they consider a Nazi a homophobe and a sexist a person that actually go against their campaign or they actually referring to actual people who hold these kind of viewpoints? I remember like way back in 2015, 2016, when I first talked about Black Lives Matter, I just got called these ridiculous names just because I did not agree with Black Lives Matter. I was called like a house nigger, I was called like an Uncle Tom, basically these horrible names to put down people just because you did not agree with their ideas. And also there are stories of various women, they go out against like feminism, right? And guess what? They basically are accused of having internalized misogyny, so... Basically, anything that goes against their ideas, they pretty much label you as a bigot, a Nazi, a sexist, internalized sexist, whatever. So, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure they consider those kind of people like me on that list of people who are like these awful kind of names and isms. The campaign is promoting anti-racist, LBGTQIA+, Friendly and feminist game culture and want to push back against its designated targets both online and offline. There are like two things that I just have to just refute right here because there's like so much freaking nonsense within like one minute. 
for starters, like pretty much gaming is pretty much like the most inclusive community out there. There's like people who are white, there are people who are black, there are people who are Latino, there are people from different walks of life, there are gay, straight, bisexual, and transgender all coming together to play one solo video game. Could be multiplayer, could be single player, Gaming is practically the most inclusive place out there. I don't see anybody who's like a gamer, a major personality, or whatever going after against people just because they're gay. If you can find examples, by all means, tell me in the comment section down below. But for the most part, gaming has pretty much everybody, no matter their background. Also, I kind of find it odd that people call themselves anti-racist because basically that's like the position of most freaking people. Like, I don't understand why people have to call themselves anti-racist to prove a fact that of course they're not racist. Not to mention like these so-called anti-racists they basically have the most racist ideas i ever seen. Like these so-called anti-racists want to have like these sort of separate buildings for black people and actually separate people just because of their skin color. So the anti-racists that I've seen so far on the internet are probably like the biggest racists i ever seen. In the interview, Wagner specifically mentioned Gamergate. Wait a second, Gamergate? <laughs> Gamergate as a hate movement that was used by pro-gamer U.S. President Donald Trump and his associate at running up to the 2016 election. Wait, you called Donald Trump a pro-gamer president? Second, we must stop the glorification of violence in our society. This includes the gruesome and grisly video games that are now commonplace. It is too easy today for troubled youth to surround themselves with a culture that celebrates violence. <laughs> they call Donald Trump a pro gamer president. <laughs> oh, oh man, the uh, the nerve, the nerve of these people calling Donald Trump a pro gamer president when he freaking goes against video games. <laughs> uh. In another write-up about the new German campaign, blogger Michelle Jensen, who specializes in the language police segment of the movement, speaks about what she perceives as the negative influence of YouTubers. It is so funny how they want to police language when in fact, earlier in the article, it talks about how they want to go against stuff that's like anti-democratic. Well, guess what? Free speech is actually fundamental. Like, every single human have a right to free speech. And if you want to police the language of those that speak stuff that you don't like, well, guess what? Those actions to silence those kind of people is actually anti-democratic. Do you not see the irony of trying to sell on stoves that you do not like just because they say stuff you don't like? Like, that's actually anti-democratic. Your idea to stop people talking goes against their right for free speech. Anyway, I think I just covered just about enough of this article. So essentially, this whole entire campaign want to make an inclusive space for gay people even though gamers are already inclusive, they want to police language. They basically said that Donald Trump is actually the freaking pro-gamer president, even though he goes against video games. And so essentially this whole entire campaign, from the get-go, is like doomed to failure. Like, I cannot imagine being like a company actually funding this kind of crap. But what do I know? What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And I'll talk to you guys next time. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend.
Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler